I wanted to make a video about my trip on all the things that I collected. And I, I mean, I collected a lot. After a cleanup, we found a bunch of stuff just kind of lying around. Some of it in garbages, but that was okay. Mm -hmm. We just collected it. So I got a ton of stuff. For example, I got two Xbox controllers, a comic book, a toy from the Left 4 Dead. I believe that's from the Left 4 Dead. A ton of buttons and uh, pins and cards. Uh, they actually had cards for like all sorts of consoles and stuff. And other cards, you know, just business cards and stuff like that. A magazine called Old School Gamer. Three t-shirts. Uh, they all have the same design on them. They just had extras. I got two of them because I volunteered. And then one day they were just like, uh, we need a mini boss. Here you go. And then five water bottles, two of which were from the, the t-shirt, same t-shirt story, where it was just one day, they're like, we need uh, somebody to be in charge of the arcade, here's a shirt, here's a water bottle, you're now in charge. But then we found three more in the, uh, actually I found three more plus another water bottle uh, in uh, the garbage, and I just took them and dished them out and stuff, and emptied them, and then I uh, think I gave one to a friend, so, you know, it's, it's a lot, but that is nothing. Or really, I need to also mention that I got two books, one on uh, basic uh, programming, not, not, you know, the basics of programming, but the programming language basic for old school computers from back in the day in the 1980s. And then another one on the history of Missile Command, written by a guy who had just barely published it. He was actually out there signing books and handing out pins and stuff, so that's where I got a lot of the pins from. So I bought his book. It was 25 bucks. Oy vey. But anyway, uh, I also got 21 games, and that is huge. Huge amount of games. I, I can't believe I got that many games. So it goes down to two Xbox games, a Crazy Taxi 2 for Dreamcast, two NES games, two Genesis games, three Kinect games, five 360 games, one of which is in the box and actually still plastic wrapped, so I decided to not test it at all. Five PS3 games and Symphony of the Night for the Saturn. I couldn't test the Saturn one because my memory card isn't quite working right, so I'm holding that off, but as soon as I get that fixed, I'm going to be testing that. But what I wanted to show you was, you know, me testing these videos. Unfortunately, it took too long. I have two hours of me trying to test these videos and seeing if they work. And that that was the parts I recorded. If I were to show you all of them, it would take three to four hours. And so that's just way too much for you to really enjoy. And I, I thought I was going to do all this, you know, commentary and stuff, but I, I've got to admit, I, I was wrong. Instead, I'm going to be doing a video on observations, and this is it. The first thing I noticed was updates. Oh my gosh, updates took forever. I plopped one game in and then it was like, we need six more updates and each one will be 200 megabits of download time. So I just had to sit there and watch it update. And I thought it was gonna be really fast, but no, I just had to sit there. So for 30 minutes, I was just sitting there watching my uh, PS3 update for the single game. And each game had several, several updates. It got to the point that I actually had to uh, just deny updates for the 360. And I kind of disconnected it from the internet. I guess it downloaded an update anyway, but, you know, <laughs> it was just too much for me. And then one of the games actually installed itself onto my PS3. It was Arkham Asylum. So it just took forever for the game itself just to start. And I was just so frustrated. I was like, listen, I just barely bought these games, just let me play them. I don't care if the game is, you know, all the way up to date. I just want to see if it works first. And it wouldn't let me, so that's that's my first observation. The next observation I made was 3D characters are clones. That doesn't make a lot of sense to you until you just start looking at the games being played. If you look at, say, even the Xbox games or the Dreamcast games, if they're in 3D, almost all the characters are very similar in style. Uh, to the point, 
um, that they are the same height. They have kind of the same build, a very similar bone structure in their cheeks and in their faces. And, and you'll notice this throughout the game. Like, you know, uh, the pl- person played by Keith David, I, I don't care what his real name is or what his name in the game is. It's Keith David, man. And he's just kind of a chunkier version of the character you're playing. And the character you're playing looks like half the crew. In fact, the only person who really looks different is the alien. Everyone else looks almost exactly the same. They, their cheekbones are the same. Their lips are the same. Their kind of facial uh, looks are the same. So it, to me, it just got annoying, you know, in Mass Effect when I was just looking at clone after clone after clone. But it got weird when I started to play under, uh, not Undertaker, Uncharted. All the characters were the same. I walked in and I was walking into the bar and all these characters were looking at me. And then I looked at them and I went, they're exactly the same. Like, if we just made them all bald, I wouldn't be able to tell them uh, apart. You know, this one has a mustache. This one has a, you know, kind of a little thing on his cheek. But if I were to be honest, they look like clones of each other. Like, am I walking into a Star Wars battle here? And, you know, then I went and I played the Dreamcast and every single character was the same height, same build, but that was, that was expected. Uh, and the same thing happened in Mass Effect, then it happened in Uncharted. Uh, the Batman games were not always like that, but it was very obvious that many of the characters were the same height and same build and they just kind of vary they put kind of a variation of each other uh near it and so just as you know culture is not like that even if you go into a monoculture there are you know differences in the facial features and the styles of the and heights of the people no culture is like this and yet video games just show this over and over and over again and I saw it started at, you know, the Dreamcast. It worked on the Xbox. It worked all the way up to, you know, modern games. So that that was a major observation. Uh, basically, what happens is they have this base character. And they go, okay, this is our base. And then we're going to make a variation of it. You know, same height, same build, same everything. And then we're just going to make this one a build, uh, you know, a little more muscular. This one's a little bit chubbier. They, they're not changing them because they don't realize that this just shows up. It really does look kind of like clones, and they're all kind of dead-eyed anyway, because they don't have the animations there for it. So it's just kind of awkward looking. But every single game I had that was 3D had this similar look, even into the Star Wars games and into, you know, many of the the dance games. It was just like, okay, this is the base character, and then we're going to do this to them. If it was a female, they might have a slenderer build and, you know, smaller shoulders and stuff, but they're still very similar looking. And that was my second observation, and it was it was kind of weird once I realized what I was looking at. After that, or actually before that, I noticed on my video recordings that it would take about six minutes from the start of the game. You know, you press start and you're like, okay, start the game. This is a new character. Let's do this to actually moving around freely. Uh, so, you know, you, you get this introduction cinema, it's sweeping around and it's showing the character and it's, it's talking about how amazing this character is, or, you know, setting up some kind of, uh, part and then it has uh, a moment where you're given slight control, and then it goes back, and it you know goes into uh, you know observation mode, and it's very it, it actually has two different types of cinemas. It has the big cinema where it's all just a video, and then they play a, a kind of video, FMV or a video that's in game, and you're looking at your character, and he's he might respond, but he's not going to do very much. He's not going to walk around. And even when you can move move around, it's very basic and, you know, they're very controlling around the movements. Even if you, cup, even if you skip a cutscene, it feels wrong. It feels like you need to go through the cinema, you need to observe it. And it, it was kind of weird at times. Uh, Mass Effect 3 had nearly nine minutes of uh, 
videos and things you had to go through before you could play. I was actually yelling at the game going, just let me play. I just want to play. I want to see if this game works. I don't care about, you know, this giant story you're giving me. I, I'll, I'll get to it when I actually uh, play this game for real life. Just let me see if this game works. And it was, it was so annoying. But I, I noticed that almost all the games, PS3 and 360 alike, and Kinect, had this. Um, even the Star Wars game would have nearly six minutes of previous stuff for you to get through before you're allowed to uh, play the game. And even when you're playing the game, they have kind of a tutorial for you to get through things. I finally was able to skip some of the scenes, but not all of them. And like I said, it felt wrong to do it. To give you a comparison, when I played Crazy Taxi, it had uh, five seconds of video. And it was just, you know, in-game, and it was just a guy going, okay, let's play, and he gets into his car and he starts it. And that's it. And then you're su- and then you're playing the game. The same thing happens with Batman and the Genesis games. And or the Genesis games actually have um, differences. Dick Tracy actually had cutscenes, but you could skip them, and it was okay. And uh, everything else was, uh, you know, much shorter, much faster than that. And I, th- I thought that was a really interesting observation about the way modern gaming is pointed and the way they think of the modern gamer. This brings me to the next observation, which was very similar to the previous one. There isn't a lot of exploration in the modern games. The more cinematic the game gets, the less exploration you're given. You, in Mass Effect 3, or in in fact all the Mass Effects, you're given kind of a straight line to follow. It's not straight as in an actual straight line, but you have to take turns, and every way is simply, this is the only way to go. You can't explore, you can't find new things. They're just giving you this line or, that you have to follow. And it tells you what you need to do next, what you know observation you need to do. They're constantly telling you, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. And that is kind of weird. I've got to admit, I, I'm wondering why it's that way. Uh, I thought the most, the weirdest one was when I was playing Uncharted 2. And I was actually enjoying myself. I was enjoying the, the, the way they were doing it. But I, I kind of stopped myself and went, I'm only pressing forward. I mean, it's, it's doing this big cinematic thing and I'm enjoying myself. But really, I'm only pressing forward and occasionally pressing jump. And maybe, you know, if I need to do something else, I'll do that. But if I were being honest, I'm not really controlling this game. You know, I could watch somebody else play this game and get the same amount of enjoyment out of it. And the same thing happened with uh, Batman or any of the other games where, I, you know, there's a little bit of exploration. But really, no, it's it's very, you know, you go here now, then you go here. Everything is kind of closed off. This is the only path you have. So that's what I observed, and it was kind of weird as I observed it. But then we go back into the older games, and they don't have that cinematic feel. They don't add cinematic stuff to it, even though one of the games is based on a movie. And, you know, it has story and stuff in it, but it just quickly gets you to the story, quickly gives you, you know, ways to explore. Or it it, actually, no, Dick Tracy, you don't, you're, you're following the same kind of line. And they're, you know, they're not holding your hand as much. Definitely, I died so fast. I I have no idea what, you know, the second level of Batman looks like. I haven't been able to make it to it yet. But, you know, everything else was about exploration. And exploration in figuring out your movements. And exploration in, you know, figuring out what to do next and how to do things. And uh, death was a common, common thing, whereas... The newer games, you don't die as much, but you will uh, have a lot more hand-holding, and they're going to make it more cinematic uh, for the feeling. So 
something I noticed uh, that wasn't as weird was the load screens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, load screens happen, especially the older the game gets. Um, the Batman games for PS3, or I guess for 360 as well, uh, sh would show Batman villains and allow you to kind of think about, you know, what am I going against? What is happening? And it was very kind of, you know, very simple in showing these pictures, but, you know, letting you think about it a bit. Uh, Mass Effect would just show a ship traveling through space or some kind of futuristic uh, observation. So then you, you felt like you were, you know, still in game a bit. And, you know, it, it really added, it kind of added to the, the game a bit because you saw all this happening. But load times were pretty... Or they weren't too long. They were like, at most, a minute. Uh, I, I think the most annoying one was when Arkham Asylum was installing itself into my PS3. And that, oh, that took forever. So I saw, you know, the same pictures over and over and over again. Uncharted was weird. Uncharted would just show a simple, single item on the bottom right. And that was kind of funny because you know it's it's supposed to be this big cinematic swooping game and then they're doing this little animation on the bottom right at one point i started joking that in uncharted 3 the little ring was actually the one ring and you know he was actually a hobbit out to uh stop sauron but uh you know in a modern setting or modern-ish setting i mean it looks like the 1980s if i were being honest uh and the load screens are just kind of annoying. I mean, if they figured out ways to get rid of load screens in the PlayStation 1 era, so they should, and they figured it out how to do it for the PS2 era, and, you know, the Wii era. So why was the PS3 and 360 doing this? This, this makes no sense. It was very obvious that they were trying to be so cool that they were creating massive load screens. And that just got annoying after a while. But once again, uh, I was able to deal with it. As for the Genesis and NES, as I was explaining earlier, they were very different. There were a lot less uh, cinematics. They loaded very quickly. In fact, I tested all four uh, games in under two minutes. I even have video footage of it, and I just went, okay, this game, now this game, now this game, now this game. And it just happened really fast. The, the honest truth is, the majority of the time was me trying to make sure that my console was working or switching out cartridges or something. The, there was no load time. I pressed start, and the game started. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, Dreamcast was a little bit slower, but still a lot faster. And the Xbox was, you know, it quickly loaded and got the games ready. They still had some, uh, for the Xbox, they had some parts that were unskippable, which was annoying. And then they had parts where I could totally just skip. They're having some guy doing a voiceover. I was like, I can read the text. Text done. Okay, let's go in. And so I thought that was really interesting. The Xbox game, uh, it loaded really fast, but I found myself kind of getting into the story I, I kind of wanted to play it a little bit more, and then play it a little bit more, and then play it a little bit more. Uh, but it definitely didn't have as many load screens, and it felt like I had just been jumped in. But it was also very hand-holdy. It, it felt like it was the exact middle, uh, the midpoint between, you know, the the NES and Super Nintendo and those kinds of games, and you know, PS3 and 360 style of games. Like, they had cinematics, they had all of that, but you felt like it was okay. You could move forward. So that that was the interesting part about the, uh, the King Kong game, is actually what it's called. <laughs> and uh, Dick Tracy had generic characters, they had cutscenes, but the gameplay itself was really original. The exploration wasn't, you know, level exploration. It was uh, gameplay exploration, trying to figure out, okay, do I shoot here? How do I shoot here? How do I get this? It was a very busy game, and you had to figure that out. 
Whereas Castlevania 2 was all about um, exploration. And I, I've, I've played the game a couple times before. I've actually got it on my Wii and stuff. But I, I've, I'm kind of trying to collect uh, all the Castlevanias in cartridge form. Just, or, you know, in their original form. Because I, I just like Castlevania. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start collecting for uh, Castlevania. And Castlevania 2 has a lot of exploration. I, I just made sure that the game played, that I could, you know, throw and stuff, or throw, use the whip. And I discovered that my controller wasn't quite moving left correctly. I need to fix that. Probably just dust something off. I, I'm going to ask a friend about it. And Crazy Taxi 2, it had exploration, but there was a time limit. So it was very, you know, it was the other side... It was kind of a little bit left of the uh, King Kong game. And it was interesting because I could explore all over the level and stuff, but they gave me time limits, and it was a very, very strict kind of game. So I found that uh, fascinating how it contrasted against the PS3 and 360 games. And even the Kinect games were this way. So uh, it, 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 there were a lot of observations, and I think... Uh, the next thing I needed to talk about was each game in particular, or even how the series felt to me. So that will be the next video.